So hi everybody. Uh, this is Mayur Patil. I am the host of your meeting. I see people are still coming and uh, they are not using passwords. So I am still accepting them. But try to use password next time. So that way you don't need me to accept it. You can directly come in. So uh, I I got a very good <coughs> reviews. I'd like to share some of them with you. Uh, let me share my screen with you. So anybody can confirm if they can hear me. Anybody's voice is on. Yes, I can hear it well. Very good. Very good. Okay. Okay. So let's keep it here. <coughs> okay, so यहाँ पे जो point of interest था मुझे ये था most of the people are asking for Android. Apparently uh, we will go for Android in coming uh, days and weeks. Uh, Note जेस के लिए अच्छा interest दिखा मुझे sixteen people are there who are trying to ask if we can have that. Definitely. Uh, Note जेस is something I have planned for tomorrow. So, जो लोग अभी इस ग्रुप में हैं अगर वो ज्वाइन करना चाह रहे हो टूमारो मॉर्निंग इलेवन ओ क्लॉक यू कैन ज्वाइन मी फॉर नोट जेस ये जो कोर्स है कल सुबह का जो सेशन है ये थोड़ा टेक्निकल रहेगा डिटेल में बट अगर कोई फ्रेशर हो या स्टूडेंट हो इफ दे वॉन्ट ज्वाइन दे कैन स्टिल ज्वाइन इट पाइथन इज समथिंग आई बिलीव पीपल फ्रॉम एकेडमिक्स वॉन्टेड टू लर्न पाइथन आई सी इफ आई कैन डू दिस um angular hai swift hai so these are good numbers so definitely not just next priority is for android let's see how it goes and there are some of the comments kafi acche comments hai uh <coughs> two or three comments hai jo main padh ke dikhana chahta hu and i want to respond that so that way is also helpful to you uh they are saying someone is saying could you please arrange sessions during week off or other than official hours because during office hours i'm able to attend session uh certainly i'll try my best to put these uh, sessions after office hours a uh, week off i have not uh, i don't know exactly if i will be able to do it on weekend but let's see uh, but anyways uh, people who will not able to attend my sessions in daytime in weekdays certainly will able to do that on the uh, youtube post session i am going to post these videos on the uh, uh on the youtube so you guys definitely can do that so one thing i remember right now again okay so recording is already started okay uh then some other person is asking that i have front end android developer please give me back end session so today session this current session is exactly for the back end only in php and uh, tomorrow session will also be for backend so those people who don't know what exactly this person is asking is uh in android when you develop android application it's called as a front end uh jahan pe students ko ya uh, jo users se un users ko front user interface dikhta hai aur jab unko data store karna hota hai to unko wo data server pe bhejna hota hai and that data basically uh is transferred using web services so there are two type of web services one is a soap web service another one is a restful web service so jo restful web service hai jo json data transformation ke format par browse hote hain this guy <coughs> is uh, trying to ask exactly if we can uh, process or provide some sessions on that web service basis for android so definitely uh, jo hamara ye current course hai isme class topic hai mvc architecture ka introduction so probably that time i'll try to get an idea of web services but tomorrow's node js definitely will evolve all about web services jo jo aaj ke zamane mein common hai web services are required for every type of front end for ios development front end for android application development for cloud development for web development angular every front end technology is useless if there is no web services at all so definitely web services are a very popular thing uh so we are trying to cover it as much as possible uh so this one is good ye ek tha uh, 
and some of one there is someone asked me to be more interactive yeah so uh, this guy is saying it was great session but can be more interactive so i understand that why he's saying more interactive because in the last session this afternoon i did not allowed anybody to speak during the session jo hum is session mein nahi karne wale in this session i would like to interact with you one to one on the voice so if somebody is asking me question other people will also able to listen the only request i have is uh, because we are having like 25 30 people now uh, if you have a question go one by one so we will not overlap each other's voice and everybody will able to hear it but that is during the session or end of the session is also fine so during the session if you are facing any problem uh, particularly in any topic uh, just raise the chat or just raise your voice and i am happy to answer but agar aap uh, voice interaction nahi karna chahte ho if you don't have any question please stay on mute that way a uh, noise jo hai wo kafi kam rahega so good one it should provide a small problem i don't know what exactly this guy is trying to say but other than that there are very few comments 12 comments out of 27 20 people but it is good okay so we are good to go now so the next topic hai us next topic mein hamara jo primary tha somebody is trying to do again annotation i don't know why okay so it's good we raised to jo next topic tha hamara dopher ko humne dekha loops and array basic syntax and installation of zam server with php so that was very baby step very basic things i didn't want to uh, bombarding the technology on you all of a sudden uh, rather having a little first step now this is going a little in depth so please stay focus uh, let me turn off my video okay that way my screen is shared Screen is shared. Participants are twenty-eight. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't try that annotation, please. Okay, good. So let's start with session. So in order to start with session, first there is a small theory. Uh, whenever you go there in Gmail or in your Hotmail account or Amazon account or even Hotstar or Prime, every every website. whenever you go there <clears throat> first thing you do is to log in your account without login you cannot access your emails without login uh, you cannot watch prime or premium content on hotstar etc and when you log in there always a check box it says remember me and you say okay log in this is my username and password and then only it will let you go inside what will happen when you try to browse Uh, your gmail page if you are not logged in i'll show you some example so let's say i am browsing my gmail so as soon as i am uh, logged in i am auto logged in because i have remembered my uh, username and password i am trying to open one email now if i copy this link and if i go to a different browser let's say uh, it's a new browser and if i paste this url now uh, remember in this browser i have not entered my username password for gmail i'm simply copying the url and entering as of this is a different page and as soon as i enter that url gmail detected that i am not a logged in user and then it asked me to log in from my various accounts how come gmail knows that i am not logged in here but i am only logged in here uh, there are two answers first answer is cookies second answer is session so session and cookies are kind of a storage where you can let people store their data while they are in the browser and keep that data and accessible that data uh, between various php pages <coughs> so in order to demonstrate exactly the practical example of uh, session first uh, we need to understand how to create multi page php uh, wizard or multi page php uh, dashboard so let's create a brand new page so you remember this index.php 
we created in tutorial one or two to one folder. Now I'm creating another page in the same folder. F drive XAMPP. htdocs qt1 and then here is uh, page2.php or just page2 and it will store it as a php page i am just doing here as in page2 and i am creating one more php page let's save it as page3.php eco page three dot php so ideally i have three pages now index.php page two dot php and page three dot php so let's open a browser this is my first page index.php i am creating one more tab and i am saying page two dot php it printed correctly and i have created page 3.php so technically these are three different pages completely different pages so instead of opening these pages in different tabs i am trying to demonstrate if we introduced a hyperlink here that hyperlink will jump to page 2 in the same tab and then from page 2 it will jump to page 3 and from page 3 it will again come back to page 1 or technically index.php so it's very simple this is called, called as connecting multiple PHP pages. So at the at the start only, out of PHP here, I'll open a a tag which is known as hyperlink tag, and I would say go to page two. And here I am giving href is page two dot php. If you go here and if you just simply refresh, okay, why it's not happening? Oh, okay. Sorry, so it was scrolled down. So I can see my uh, hyperlink here, and if you see here at the bottom, if I mouse over to the hyperlink, it is showing me where the link will go. And if I click it, it will go to index2.php. Now remember, the URL you have introduced here must be exist. If that URL is not exist, it will simply say object not found, and it will throw you error four zero four so what we made a mistake that its name is page 2 and i have given index 2 so now i am changing here as page 2.php i'm saving my page i'm going back i'm refreshing and if you see at the bottom it is showing page 2.php i click it and now i am on page 2 if i if i want to go back i can always use back button and i'll come back now i am going to add a little logic here i am copying this hyperlink i'm going to page 2 and right below this page 2 sorry here remember this is html this is not php at all i'm saying go to page 3 and i'm giving here name is page 3 okay now if i do this how it look like either go here and refresh in page 2 and right next to that the hyperlink come up so I want to beautify it a little bit. So I'm giving a BR tag here. So now my go to page three comes here. So I'm closing these two tabs, additional tabs. We don't need this. So from the index.php, I'll go to page two.php. And from page two, I'm going to page three.php. So it's a very simple flow. Now, similarly, I'm also copying this hyperlink and I'm going to page three. I'm just pasting here. Now, can anybody tell me from page three where we can we, we wanted to go anybody can respond that way i i can understand you're getting my point we can go to page two as well as index page. very good so let's try with index.php and we would say here go to home uh, and I forgot to mention PR tag here. I've saved it. So now I'm refreshing this and I am now going to home page. So fast forward, I'm clicking these links from index.php. Always focus in this address bar. 
I am going from index.php to index2.php, from index2.php to index3.php, and from index3.php, I came back to index.php. So this way, I have created a small program which navigates the pages. And the same kind of navigation you can always find in normal website. Like for example, if you go to uh, yahoo.com, which is a very uh, popular news aggregators website, uh, there are web links and web links. Yes, are a tag hai. The, there are plenty of a tag. So for example, uh, you click this URL. From that page, you are coming to this page. From this page, there are multiple pages going inside and that's how you are calling it as a browsing the website. So this is a small browsing experience we created for ourselves. Now, once you created this, the idea is to set some text on index.php in session and only access that text in page two and page three apparently and then make it incremental. So this might be a little confusing to you. So let me show you something like this. So always remember the very first step for PHP session is to start the session. So in the notepad I'm writing the first start the session on every page. So remember to start the session on every page and at the start only. This is very important page at top so at the top you have to start the session so session is as i mentioned is like a bucket where we are storing the data so that data can be accessible on any one of the page so i'm starting this session here on index.php similarly i am starting this session again on page 2.php again similarly i'm starting this session on page 3.php and once you started this index, uh, this session, index.php understand that you have a bucket where you can store the data. And the name of the bucket is dollar underscore session. This bucket is nothing but a simple array, which is nothing but an array. So if you remember here we have created array and in the array we have given index or uh, key and then you can assign the value over here so similarly in the session also you can create the key so when you want to keep some data in your bucket definitely you need to give some name to that value so in the session i would say a website underscore counter so imagine dollar underscore session is a array and there you are creating a key website underscore counter and here i am saying a counter one or simple one one is fine as soon as you assign a value to session it will remember this value now if I want to print website count, it's very easy. Right above this welcome to PHP, I would say echo dollar underscore session, just like how we printed array this afternoon. Dollar underscore session, and in the inside, you can give your key name. So let me print this. Let's see how it looks like. Something is not good. Let's see. Okay. So you can see this one. So let provide a br tag here so this is one ab isko thoda aur readable banate hain website visit counter save it and refresh it it says website visit counter is one now when i click this page 2 i would like to access that value on page 2 as well and then on page three as well. And then I would like to go home and I want to see this counter. Now remember, we are not touching this value yet. We just set this value on the index.php and not on index2.php. But still we will able to access that value and print that value 
in page two because we have already started the session. Now on page two, when you say session start, PHP actually start finding whether there is any existing session and there is which we created and we have created a bucket and given our variable name website underscore counter. So this value if exist will be accessible here. So I will say echo. Uh, I'll give little br tag here website counter and here dollar underscore session and my key name. What is my key name? My key name is website underscore counter. Now remember this key can be anything. This can be your name. This can be anything, but I'm following the naming conventions. Naming convention is very important in programming. So this is readable. It's a, it's a counter of website hits separated by underscore because space is not allowed. That's why there is a underscore. Now, if I stay on page two, I'll, I'm on index.php. I can see website counter one. I click to page two and I can still see website counter is one. Now, this value one is not set up anywhere on page two, but this was set up in index.php and I'm accessing it in a ph page two.php. And similarly, I can access this value in page three as well. I just copied that line as it is without modifying anything. And I would like to click page three and see website counter one. And again, if I go to home, I'll have that website counter one as a value. So let's settle on this. We have a session, we have given a value and we are accessing it from everywhere. Now we can introduce a small twist that when you are on page two, I want to change that value. Can I change that value? So let's see. It's very similar what we did here. It's just that it's string, but uh, okay, let's keep it as a string only. So now the value has been changed on page two, but the value is not changed on page three. The value is changed on index.php, value is changed on page two.php, but not on page three. So let's visit index.php again. I'm refreshing my page. What is my current value? One. I'm going to page two. See, my website counter value is now two. Surprisingly, when I go to page three, the value will remain stored as two because this was modified in page two. But now from page three, when I'll go to home, my value will again change on index.php before print, which will be one. So I click here and here I can see one. So I'm trying to demonstrate that you can access and modify the session values of session number anywhere you want. Page two, page three, index.php. Now this is a little static. Let's create something a little more dynamic. When I say dynamic, whenever I refresh this page, I want to increment this number on the same page, index.php. So I will add a little if on index.php if it's set. We are we need to check whether this dollar underscore session of website counter exists. If it is exist, then accept counter variable in a new variable counter by copying this variable like this. So what we are doing here. In this if statement, I'm trying to check if website counter key exists in session. If it is there, then bring that value in a brand new variable. It could be my counter, any, any, any variable can be here. You cannot go in this if statement if you are trying to browse this URL for the very first time. For example, if I open a new browser here and if I browse this URL, it will not go in this if statement because till that time website counter will not be initiated. So once I have a counter, what I'll do, I'll increment it by one. Now once I have incremented by one, I would like to store the new value again in the session. So how it is done? Again, dollar underscore session, website underscore counter, and I'm saying, my counter is my new value. 
and this hard coding i am commenting out or else it will override again this value and if it is not set if you are browsing this page for the very first time i am initiating my counter with one let's see if this logic works i'm not sure 100 percent so i refreshed it it become two i again refresh it become three four five six but if i copy this url and if i go to some new browser it started from one that means this time it went in this else way okay somebody is not muted their mic can you please mute uh, i have no idea how to do this mute all yes perfect so this way we have created a very simple visit counter now this counter or this logic sorry i'm opening i lost that bit yeah this logic if i copy paste in every page of page two i am deleting this and i'm simply saying this one and again this one so every time you visit a page the counter will be increment for example right now it's one instead of refresh i'm going to page two it is now two i'm going to page three now remember when i go to home it will not reset to one it will increment by one that will become four five six seven so that is how basically uh, in the the old time we used to track how many people visited my website so far and they were used to flash that number so far 50,000 users visited this web page kind of thing so uh, counter is not the perspective here the the real perspective of this demo is to show how one can utilize the session value now when you can um, create a session you can also destroy a session so I'll, I'm creating a brand new page here. Let's say I'll delete this. And I'm saying your page destroyed. Or let's let's echo here, simple echo. Session destroyed. So again, you have to start the session. And in order to destroy the session, all you need to do is session underscore destroy. I'm saying page four dot PHP. And on page three, right after this, I'm giving one more hyperlink here. Page four dot PHP, and it says reset counter. So let's see how it goes. From page three, I'm going to home. It is 10, page two, 11 page 312 now you can see there is a new hyperlink appeared here reset counter which is taking me to page 4 okay now i would like to go to index.php and see the counter started from 1 because on page 4 on the reset counter my session was destroyed this way you can start a session you can create a new variable you can destroy the last fact I would like to add in this example that you can add multiple variable in session so for example website underscore counter was only one variable you can add hundreds of thousands of variable in your session it is not restricted at all so this is all for session so i'd like to take a, a break for five minutes so you guys can uh, raise your hands or raise your voice and ask me the questions if you have anything for the session and after session i would like to move to database connectivity so I would say unmute all. Please start talking if you have any question.
Hello. Anybody can listen me? Am I audible? Yes. yes, sir. Okay, perfect. Yes. Yes, I cannot see any question. So everything is understood. That there, there, there are there are no questions at all. So let's wait for two minutes more. If okay, someone says no understood very well. Awesome. Okay, so let's move to the next topic. I believe everybody understood what session is exactly. So the next topic we have is database connectivity. So I am, I am uh, presuming <clears throat> that people from this group already have a solid understanding or a good understanding or even a basic understanding about database. So database basically a data set where you can store your values in columns and rows uh, and those columns and rows are saved in tables and multiple tables are saved in database. So there are multiple type of databases available out there. For example, Oracle, uh, Microsoft SQL Server, uh, MySQL, which is owned by Oracle now again, uh, MongoDB is out there, uh, Cassandra is there, uh, HBase is there. Uh, there are plenty of, plenty of databases out there. But one of the databases very popular for PHP world is MySQL. So either you can call it as MySQL, but uh, people from old school always call it as MySQL. So the pronunciation is a little different. So MySQL always ship with your XAMPP. That's why here we started MySQL. But MySQL is not visible. It's a, it's a shell based system. MySQL doesn't have any interface like Oracle or Microsoft SQL Server. So MySQL is always shell based system. Uh, but then uh, there is a software developed in PHP for MySQL to access MySQL tables and rows and columns and also it allows us to create new tables. The name of the software is PHP MyAdmin. So if you go here and you simply type localhost, as we have seen this dashboard before this afternoon, you can see a PHP my admin URL here. Either you click here or you can simply type here PHP my admin. Either this or clicking by this URL, it's one and the same thing. So if you click PHP my admin, it will launch this software. This is an open source software, free software, where you can create new databases and under each database, you can have a multiple tables. So let's create a very small database. If I click here new, it's asking me my database name. Let's say tutorial one. Sorry, no. And I'm saying create. So as soon as I created this database, this empty database, I can see on the left side. And under this database, you can create these tables. Okay, just a precautionary confirmation. Everybody see my screen and listen to me, my audible? yes sir okay awesome so in this create table you can always create table and you can mention how many columns you want to create and that's how it will go so usually tables if i want to give you an example if you are writing an e-commerce portal in php then you need to create tables for categories you need to create table for products you need to create table for orders or it's pricing, uh, the photos of the products, etc., etc., etc. Even for users, if you want to let user register, definitely you will need a table for user. So we will create a very simple uh, table for user. I'm giving a name as user, and there are let's say four columns I'm trying to create as a go. 
as soon as it says go it will bring you a new interface this is the interface where you can create the columns in your table so the name of the first column is user id i would say i want it auto incremented ai stands for auto incremented as soon as you click this your primary key gets activated those who don't know what primary key is what auto increment is what table is i highly recommend them to first uh, check your skill set on database uh, then only it will make sense to you what we are demonstrating here so full name its data type i would like to do is varchar and i'm giving the size of varchar maximum to 255 you can have multiple data types like text which is larger than varchar you can accept date time you can access integer tiny int etc 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 then string blob special there are so many data types out there but usually we use only two type or three type of uh, data types integer varchar boolean and date type so user id full name email id and its data type is again varchar varchar long form is variable character again 255 and uh, we don't need to use this additional column just three column is good so i'm leaving it empty and i am saying save as soon as i say save it will create my table here so under tutorial you can see user or here user and if you click user you can see its data right now there is no data that's why there is nothing in it but I can see my three columns, user ID, full name, and email ID. So how about we add some users from phpMyAdmin. So here, when you select a table, you can always have this insert tab. And as soon as you insert it, you can provide the value of your column. Now remember, user ID we selected as auto-incremented. So we don't need to give any value to this column, simply in full name let's say john doe and the email id is john at gmail.com we can add one more record here is smith joy and email id is smith at the rate gmail.com and i can scroll down i can see this go button as soon as you click go button two records will be added to the table and how can i see that I can either click here this user or I can click this browser tab. In this browser tab, now I can see there are two records for this table. So if I close this and I'll reopen my local host, I go to PHP MyAdmin. I can see there is my database I created two minutes back. Under tutorial, there is a new table. I click it, and as soon as I click, I can see my two rows. It's as that simple. Zero query we have written, no query at all. You just need to use it as your PowerPoint or Excel sheet as you use. Usually, when you are into development, we don't do this. We always use SQL queries. Like here, to see the data of the table, the standard query is select star from table name. And when I insert a new record here, test at test test at gmail.com when i say go if you see here there is an insert query so it's a dedicated language the language is known as sql 92 or rdbms database structure there is language to save the data to get the data to update the data so usually there are four type of queries uh, we use so i'm going here I'm creating a new file i'll delete it so first is to get the data the kind of query is select star from your table name now this is a modifier or a placeholder you can always use your table name in our case it is user then second type of option known as insert the data the kind of query we need to write is insert into your table name our table name is user in the bracket you need to specify which columns you want to include now remember if you go to browse or if you go to insert we did not provided the value for the first column but only for full name and email id 
So I'll need to do is full name, comma, email ID. And here values I need to provide. My name is new name, comma, new at gmail.com. Always use semicolon at the last for the queries. This is the exact query which get generated when you click insert tab from here. It's just that for students, for newbies, it's very easy to insert record using PHP MyAdmin, but you must know this language as well because sooner we will need to write these queries in PHP. Third type of data is to update the data. So when you make this entry, a new record will be made, new name, new at gmail.com. But imagine the spelling has been mistaken. Instead of new name, it become new Nama. And I need to update the full name here. So the query for that is update user set your full name column because we just need to update full name. The new value is new name but I need to make sure where email ID is equal to new at gmail.com because there are multiple records. I don't want to update full name for John at gmail or Smith at gmail. I only want to update the fourth record which is not there yet right now. But once this query will be executed, this record will appear here. I only want to update that one specific record. So I have given a condition here where the email ID is new at gmail.com. The fourth operation is delete the data. And it says delete user where email ID is equal to new at gmail.com. So first we inserted the rate data. It's known as create, stands for C. Then we read the data. It stands for R. Then we updated the data. It stands for U. And then we deleted the data, which stands for D. And it's known as crude. So once when someone says we want to write a crude operation, that means they want to develop a system in PHP, which allow user to fetch the users or table, insert into the table, update the table, and delete the table. That's all about PHP MyAdmin and the database we are going to need um, in, the, in the next uh, spell. Uh, I'd like to take a break, two minute break, uh, so I can be interactive with you. Uh, just wanted to understand if everything is good or anybody have any question on database. Any questions so far? Oh, I can see a few people left already. Good. So everybody is uh, okay with so far. Any any questions? No question, sir. Okay. Awesome. So once now we have these queries written here, we need to connect from PHP to this database. Now imagine database is like, like a bridge between two sections. So usually when I used to teach in my uh, organization a couple of years back, I used to give an example that imagine you have something on the left side and then here is a river. And then on the right side, you need to shift something. So usually this is PHP, this is water, and this is your database. Now you have kept the data in your database. There is no link, nothing. You cannot cross this. And you want to access that data from PHP from the left side to right side. Usually in this scenario, what we do, we develop a bridge. And from this bridge, PHP variables, walks, go to the database, do the necessary operation, whether it is deleting the record or getting the data, 
or inserting record or updating record and once they complete their operation and if the operation is getting the data they bring that data and display here again with the php so it's kind of left and right side now in order to connect this php with this database because there would be multiple php and multiple databases so if i say it's p1 p2 p3 and there would be multiple databases let's say d1 d2 and d3 what if p3 php wanted to connect with d1 and p1 database uh, p1 php wanted to connect with database 2 and apparently p2 also wanted to connect with d1 so there are four attributes we must know when we think to connect our php with database the first one is host means where is the machine of database that is ip address of the machine second one is username now because when you type here local host and when you click php my admin you directly go inside nobody asks you to log in because there is no password set up here and if you click here home you can see the user is root at the rate location is localhost because i am having the database on my same machine so there is no ip address required and there is no password by default in xam so no password has mentioned here that means your username is root right now here but this is not the case every time in production we always change our username the third one is your password right now it is blank but in production we always have a password so i'll give you a small story behind this password if you have heard uh, a story of a company from america uh, they are the largest survey uh, company and their system administrator confirmed i think 2018 that 100% of the their data was stolen and ultimate reason came out that the password was very simple to guess of the database the password was admin so hackers didn't even need to hack they easily went to their ip address uh, do the key checker and simply tried the first password or second password or third password and it let them in so the password usually we use in production is always complicated hard to remember that kind of thing so password is very important but in php my admin usually the password is empty the fourth one which database you want to connect the name of the database so these four things you must know in our case what is that in our case ours is tutorial one so in nutshell we have host local host password is root Oh, sorry username is root password is empty and the database is tutorial one so these are the four attributes we will require to connect from php to my database so i am creating a new php page i am deleting this and i am save, saving it as db1 i am opening my php scriptlet just to test i am doing all good I'm saying echo welcome to database example. Saving colon, I save it and I'm going into the browser. Instead of index.php, I'm saying db1.php. And yes, so far it looks good. Now there are certain commands in my SQL with PHP which allows you to connect. Now let's go to W3C school again php mysql connectivity uh, mysql i underscore connect w3 c school so it's a long search i have made but you can simply say php mysql connectivity and it will bring you the w3 c school url of that page 
Now, if you browse this page, you will see plenty of functions are out there in order to do the manipulation in MySQL. We are not going to use all of them, but only two or three. So you can see a very basic example here. Uh, I think I'm misleading you. This is not a correct example. One second. This is a little advanced. I want to show you a little simple. So let me search this MySQL I underscore connect PHP. Good. So MySQL I is the library built in PHP, which allows me to connect from my PHP to MySQL. And in order to let them connect, there are various functions out there. You can see there are all kinds of functions here. We are not going too much in detail, but just we are following these four steps, which we have seen here. So the first step is to connect with your database. And in order to do that, you need to establish a bridge. Now, which thing we need first, which machine we are trying to connect. So first we need to use the library MySQL I underscore connect. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> hmm. One second, hold on. MySQL I underscore connect. It's the same function, but now in the new style, you can also write this way, but this is the modern way or new way. I never use this and we'll never use this. We'll always stick to the traditional way of establishing a connection. Now procedural style is MySQL underscore connect and it accepts a couple of parameters. First one is the host and is optional. If you don't provide it, it always uses your local shin but we are going to provide it. Second one is username, which is also optional. If you don't provide it, it will try to ask MySQL if it is open for everybody. In our case, it is not. Then the password, the database name. Just simply omit port and socket, we don't need this. We only need these four things. So the first one is localhost. Then second parameter is username. What was our username? Root. Password. The third parameter is blank. The next parameter is database name. Database name was tutorial1. And then if by mistaken this information is not correct. So MySQL will not allow your PHP to connect it. Then we'll say or MySQL I underscore error. Or we'll simply say print or echo. Let's say echo. Echo MySQL underscore. Let, let's simply say MySQL underscore MySQL I underscore error. And as soon as you do that, let's see if I can access DB1. Yes, I can access, I cannot see any error, but on purpose. Just misspell your local host spelling. Go here and it is still trying and it says PHP network gate address failed. No such host is known on line number four. Line number four here, no such host is available. That will demonstrate to us that this connection established successfully. Now, once your bridge is created, you can always execute the queries. Remember, there are four types of queries we have seen. Get the data, insert the data, update the data, and delete the data. So first, we are only seeing the select star from users table or, or this query. So to do that, I must have a function which allows me to execute that query. And for that, I have mysql i underscore query function. This function accepts two parameter. In my dream viewer, you can see dollar link. Second one is query. But I want to show you here. So let's see. Let's Google for this. MySQL I underscore query. I'm going here. 
and you can see this is the new style i want to go with the old style old style is procedural style mysql underscore query in the first parameter you need to provide the connection object and then your query this way it will execute that query and give you the object in return so i'm going to say dollar query is equal to mysql underscore query my connection object is dollar con and then my query is select star from user i think it's user right after executing this query my data will come in this dollar query object which i need to read but remember this is not the array this is the database object so you cannot just go there and print r or for looping this object that is not how it is going to happen to do that you have multiple function for example mysql i underscore fetch underscore array this is one the function or mysql i underscore fetch underscore asoc and there are plenty of other functions but these two are the commonly used functions which reads data from this object and then you can print it or do whatever you want usually i do not use this i use asoc asoc stands for associative array where i'll get the column name as key in the array and i can print the values in that now let's see if we can have that mysql i underscore fitch underscore asoc again okay, here and little here you can see the procedural style is mysql fetch asoc and it is asking the result our result is nothing but query or let's rename it to dollar result you can name it anything you want so i'll say dollar val is equal to mysql i underscore fetch underscore associative array and in the bracket i'm giving my result object it's that simple but if you print r this let's see if we can print r this because it is an array you see the array user id 1 full name is john do john at gmail.com only one record appeared but in database there are three records why because this is not literally the array you need to integrate a moving cursor and what i mean by that integrate a moving cursor you need to use while loop while dollar r is equal to mysql i underscore fetch underscore asoc dollar result so when you say mysql i underscore fetch underscore asoc it only reads next line by default it is on minus one when you say that it jumps to the zeroth index or the first row you need to jump this to second row in order to get it again the next row until there are rows and to achieve that you need to use while loop so while in dollar r the result will come the the actual array until mysql fetch associative array from result do this loop and now i am happily print dollar r because current row is in dollar r remember this afternoon i used pre tag so my output in array was beautiful i close this and i give here two break lines so i can see my result property now i am refreshing this so you can see my two rows smith and test how many rows are there okay there are three rows i don't know why yeah i know because we also fetched it in advance so i remove that here and see so now you can see there are three rows now once you have the data you can use this data or whatever way you want you can always do this for example um, i'll always echo here table and after while loop i'll close my table and in while loop i always open my tr tag and i'll close it 
those who don't know what table tag in HTML, what TR tag, what is TD tag, please refer WPC school for HTML. These are the HTML tags. So I open TD, I concatenated, school name is my column name. And I am closing my TD, sorry. So I am only accessing one column name here in one TD, that is in one column and on another, what was my another column name, email ID. And it is grouped in a proper TR and I here I am little styling it, I'm giving border one. Let's see how it looks like, uh, yes. So the proper table appeared. If you view source it, you can see table, TR, TD, TD, TR, TD, TD, TR, TD, TD. So this is the HTML output from the database we are displaying here. So this is a very basic uh, but very important uh, section of PHP tutorial where we are fetching the data from database and uh, just simply showing on a page. So I think it's it's almost 11 o'clock. Um, it is good enough for you to try your hands with PHP. I think we will need one more session, probably sometimes tomorrow after Node.js session. Uh, we will go with remaining three options where we are deleting the record, where we are inserting a new record, where we are updating a record. But if you have some time tomorrow morning, or if you're not going in Node.js, try your hands using W3C school and try to create a small example for insert, update and delete record. For insert, update, delete, these entire things are same. All you need to do is change this query. That's it. Because insert, update and delete do not bring any data. You literally do not need this echo. All you need to do is MySQL underscore query. That's it. So far, this is all for today. If you have any question, please post it. Uh, or and else I will send you the feedback form. You can always post your feedback over there. So do you have any question on the voice you want to ask? Production is the live application. For example, when I contact uh, people from my client base, if they have any project, they give me project and me and my team develop that project for them. That is nothing but the production. Another one is difference between SOC and array. It's, it's very simple. Associative array always comes with a key value pair and array always comes in index, which we already solved here. So this was basically array. And if you remember, there was new array in the bracket, the key, this was the associative array. So here exactly what we did, we never said, dollar r of zero dollar r of one you always gave the database column name here that's why it is as of nothing else what else if you have any question you can still ask asoc is the first choice definitely not array because in asoc we have to provide the exact column names all the time a respective manner, what is their sequence in the database. So for example, uh, today full name is in the index of zero, one, two on the one. What if I drop this column and re-add? When I'll re-add, it will come next to email and its index will change. So I have to reshuffle those indexes in my code if I use array. But instead if I use associative, I don't care what is the sequence or the position of the on the column i always use my column name a respective manner where that column exactly in the table uh, you can also voice by the way instead of chat so it would be easy let me see the participants i'll say unmute all yeah you can then voice now Kalyan is asking, can we use Microsoft SQL Server Manager for database? Absolutely. So we have Microsoft SQL Server libraries in PHP, but those are not coming by default in PHP. 
you have to add that library in your PHP installation and then you can always use it. Just to give you an idea, you can always search MS SQL Server extension for PHP. And there are plenty of extensions developed by Microsoft for PHP. You can download it and then use exactly how we are using for MySQL. You can download from here Microsoft drivers for PHP on SQL Server. What else? I realized that there are few students from KKW as well. Uh, those students do have a written paper, I think, on PHP. Uh, if you have any question related to your portion, which is not yet covered here, you can all still ask that question. No, I cannot hear anything. I think people are unmute. Uh, they have to unmute. Yeah, now try. Hello. Hello. Huh, Kunal, sir. Yeah. yeah, hi, Kunal. Yes, Hello. now I can. Yeah, we can listen to you, Moini. Okay. Hello. Hello, sir. Yeah, Kunal. Uh, so basically, web services are frameworks PHP already. Web services are the same as एक तर तुम्ही स्वतःचा okay. फ्रेमवर्क बनवा ज्याच्यामध्ये तुम्ही वेब सर्व्हिसेस लिहू शकता और तुम्ही स्टँडर्ड फ्रेमवर्क एमवीसी फ्रेमवर्क यूज करा फॉर एग्जांपल आम्ही यूज करतो कोड इग्नाइटर सो कोड इग्नाइटर पीएचपी मध्ये लिहिलेला फ्रेमवर्क आहे यू कॅन ऑलवेज गो अँड चेक कोड इग्नाइटर कोड इग्नाइटर फ्रेमवर्क मध्ये रेस्ट एपीआई चा सपोर्ट दिलेला आहे सो कोड इग्नाइटर रेस्टफुल एपीआई सर्च केलं तुम्ही तुम्हाला त्याचे एग्जांपल्स पण भेटतील आणि त्याचे लायब्ररीज पण भेटणार so ते झाल्यानंतर काय होतं की तुम्ही सिंपली त्याला कॉल करू शकता तुम्हाला एक एग्जांपल देतो मी यस सो हा एक लाइव एप्लिकेशन आहे माझं मीडिया लिस्ट मीडिया लिस्ट नावाचं एक फंक्शन आम्ही पीएचपी मध्ये बनवलाय जो जेसन मध्ये हा रिझल्ट आउटपुट करतो हा डेटाबेस मधून आलाय बेसिकली आणि त्याचा आउटपुट जेसन मध्ये आलाय आता हे जे फंक्शन आहे मीडिया लिस्ट हे कोड इग्नायटरच्या पीएचपी मध्ये लिहिलेलं आहे एंड ऑफ द डे इट इज पीएचपी ओनली बट तुम्हाला कोड इग्नायटरचे स्टँडर्ड युज करावे लागतील एवढंच सो रिकमेंडेशन कोड इग्नायटर किंवा केक पीएचपी आहे यू कॅन ऑलवेज युज युअर प्रेफरन्सेस इन दॅट ओके Kalyani, installation is very simple. You can always go to ZAMP website and download uh, from here. I am giving you the URL right in the chat. ZAMP basically uh, is, is nothing but a standard software just like WAMP and other things where all of the softwares required like Apache, MySQL, PHP admin are included. As soon as you installed, uh, you can have this control panel you just need to start these two services apache and mysql and you are good to go why it is saying oh i'm sorry i think my messages were not publishing this is the url
what else uh, do anybody else do have any questions okay i think we are good now as of now i'll still post the feedback form on the group please do fill it so that way i'll know what is going good what is not going good our participants are still very low i was expecting it a good number uh, let's see what is exactly not keeping our participant in the group uh, so I request everybody who is participant right now just to fill the feedback form and tomorrow morning 10 o'clock node js will be started I think Node.js will take more time than what I have committed there. It will take at least three to four sessions. So those who are professionals, who are developers are definitely welcome. From students who really want to see how the advanced technology works, they can join, but then they have to do some homework on Node.js for sure. So try your best to read a little bit about Node.js and join me tomorrow morning uh, and we can start with a basic course on Node. And uh, Kunal and... Uh, um, Kalyani, from your professional group, if other developers would like to uh, experience this, just let them add. And uh, I would like to have a good circle of developers uh, for the future endeavors. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night, everybody. Bye bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you.